I welcome all the viewers to the academic session on theory of probability. Starting with the learning objectives that we would have today, basic probability concepts and definitions, conditional probabilities and the application of Bayes theorem to find out the reverse probabilities. Starting with the very basic concept of probability, how we define probability. Probability is the chance that something is going to happen, some event is to occur. It is the numerical measure of the likelihood that an event will occur. Like suppose it is expressed, it is also expressed as fractions and in decimals also as 0 0.16, 0 0.50, 0 0.88. It is the expression of how the probability is represented. More to it is the probability of an event must be between 0 and 1. Probability of an event if is 1, that is it is certain to happen that the event will certainly occur. And if it is 0, the implying that it is impossible to occur, it will never happen. After defining the probability concepts, uh, the definition of probability, let us understand the definition of event. What is an event? Event is a possible outcome of an activity, whatever we does. Suppose we toss a coin, what happens in tossing a coin that either a head will appear or a tail will appear. So, head is the appearance of head is an event and appearance of a tail is also an event that is associated with the activity that we have tossed a coin. Now, the activity that we are performing this kind of like if we are rolling a dice appearing of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. What is this? This is an event that has come out. This is a event that has been produced by that activity and this activity that we have performed that is giving some outcomes is an experiment. Further to start with the knowing the probability, we always start with the sample space. If an activity is conducted, if an experiment is conducted, the possible outcomes are merged and it is a set of all possible outcomes that is collected as a sample space. Like in coin, in coin toss experiment, what we have is the outcomes comes out as a head and tail. So, head and tail is jointly as a sample space provided that if it does not stand on its edge, like if we toss a coin, what can happen is head or tail appears. But there should not be any any kind of activity like it stand on its edge. Then only the sample space collectively is called as a head and tail. Now, there is a new term also that if we combine all the possible outcomes of uh, the activity that we have performed, this is called a list of exhaustive events. That is the possible outcomes that has been from the experiment. This is called collectively exhaustive events. Now, there is a new term that is a requirement that suppose if I want to know the probability that the chance that the ceiling fan will fall down, what is the chance of ceiling fan will fall down? The chance of then again to get the probability what we have to do is that we have to see the possible outcomes of a ceiling fan. Possible outcomes of a ceiling fan if we collect it all together, it can stuck, it can revolve or it can fall down, whatever this. The problem is in this case is that we are biased in collecting the sample space. That is what we have is that they are not occurring with equal chances. This is a requirement. This is a requirement if we calculate a probability, a chance of something to happen. Then the sample space, the events that has been collected in the sample space must have an equal occurrence of chances. That is, events occur with equal chances in an experiment. This is called equally likely event. So, this is the first requirement of a probability to calculate that the events that you are keeping with the sample space that must be equally occurring. So, this is a this remains a question what would be the sample space of falling down of a ceiling fan you cannot do it like if we are tossing a coin tossing a coin that had and tail both have equal chances to occur so sample space has been combined by that if suppose we roll a dice we are rolling a dice that is 1 2 3 4 5 6 what is happening there is that all have equal chances to occur so when we have a equal chances to occur then we only we form a sample space otherwise not now Related to the events, what we had learned is that how we calculate probability will come after this, but we are trying to define the different kinds of event that can happen. Is first of all, is that equally likely events is a requirement to calculate the probability. Second, is there is something a mutually exclusive event. What are mutually exclusive events? Suppose we are conducting something and one or more events all together may not appear then they are mutually exclusive events like again if i'll continue the same example of tossing of a coin what is happening is head and tail is forming a sample space but if head appears it does not let the tail to come out on that that means you cannot have both the events to occur at the same time 
so this implies that these events are said to be mutually exclusive events they are mutually exclusive one more example we can toss is like we have a well shuffled uh, pack of 52 cards what happens is suppose we i have an event of queen of diamonds i have an event of queen of diamonds that i am picking a card out of it and that is a queen of diamond another is a queen of club so if it is a queen of diamond and queen of club they both have, do not have the same kind of uh, appearance they, they cannot come all together at the same time so that means these are mutually exclusive events this is what how we define mutually exclusive now what we have learned is the probability concept how do we define how do we express the probability probability is al always expressed as a in decimals or fractions and it is between 0 and 1 it cannot go beyond 1 it cannot be less than 0 and another is that we there is a requirement that whatever activity we are performing to find out the probabilities now what happens is that the events that is coming out of that activity they must be equally occurring that it is not that we have a biasness into it now how do we calculate probabilities after learning the definition of event sample space how we are going to calculate this probability this is an important there are three approaches mainly to find out the probabilities the first approach is a pretty classical approach what happens is in some cases probability if we want to find out a like uh, if we want to find out a chance that had will appear on the coin now chance that had will appear on the coin we don't need to do an experiment in advance that is we know that head will appear or tail will appear so how we define number of outcomes that are favorable divided by the total possible outcomes that can happen now there are two things we need a head on the coin that is a we are looking for the chance that head will appear on the coin the chance that head will appear how many outcomes are there when we are tossing the coin there are two outcomes so head is appearing one time that is number of outcomes where the event occurs number of outcomes that are favorable to me there is only one outcome favorable to me so i'll do one by two total now this is a pretty classical approach because we know in advance that a coin will lead to head or tail we know it in advance we don't need to do an experiment in that case like rolling a dice has only six faces one two three four five six we don't need to do that experiment with us so this kind of uh, approach to calculate the probability where we know in advance that what is going to happen what are the outcomes that is going to come this is called priori classical approach suppose i have a question uh, another question that uh, suppose you are asked to get the probability if i ask you a prob chance what is the chance that you will pass in cat examination what is the chance that you will live to be 85 now this kind of question uh, in passing the cat examination you don't uh, uh, you don't know in advance that what are what can be the possible outcomes that may have if i'll appear for cat examination so what you need is this approach does not works out but there is an another approach that is called relative frequency approach that is in relative frequency approach what you have is that you will conduct an experiment either you have already conducted an experiment or you are going to conduct that an experiment that is uh, what you will see is how many times if suppose you conduct a mock test 10 mock test and eight times you passed or you get successful into the um, this examination then you what do you think in your mind is that 80 percent is the chance that you may pass into the cat examination in final examinations this is called relative frequency approach that is uh, it is not stated in advance like in prayer classical approach you need to do an experiment for this to determine the probability here what you see is uh, how often it has been occurring how often like uh, i said what is the chance that you will pass in this final examination of cat so what you are doing is you are conducting it you are appearing in 10 mock test and whatever in 10 mock test if you get failed in four so what get in failed in four and six you get passed so what you say 60 percent of the times i was successful so you predict this as a probability of passing in cat examination this is called a relative frequency approach to find out the probability now another uh, let's see this example suppose uh, insurance company knows from past actual data of all males 40 years about 60 of every one leg will die so what you can imagine is you can predict that out of 60 uh, out of one leg 60 dies so 0 0.0006 0 0.0006 is a chance that another uh, accident like this will happen so this is called relative frequency approach now let's suppose uh, there is something more to it like you don't have the time suppose i have a judge has to take a decision a judge has to take a decision that should i allow a nuclear power plant at this should i go for this should i 
listen to the what is being uh, 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 what is being given by the teacher in the class it is at the time it it is on the spot that you have to make a chance the chance that you will listen to him the chance that uh, some something like you cannot do an experiment on even you do not have in advance what is going to happen so what happens is this kind of uh, still you want to have a probability then it is called a subjective approach this is a subjective probability like i'll give you an example a clear example uh, suppose a judge has to decide about uh, a judge wants to know the chance uh, judge has to decide that whether he should allow for a nuclear power plant in that location now what happens is he cannot do an experiment on this he cannot conduct something like simulation he cannot conduct something like mock test he cannot have a frequency base or even he does not know in advance that what can be the accident that can happen because of this so what he will think of himself on the spot that what is the chance that an accident may occur because if he allows to the nuclear power plant so if he knows the chance then he can just say to the answer of it now so what is this this is a subjective probability uh, he he will use his best judgment to know that chance and then he will make some decision out of so after this what we have is we have three kind of different uh, approaches to have different situation one situation is that we know in advance and we don't need to do an experiment what we do in that case is that we uh, we will use a priori classical approach and then we will answer by that formula that is number of favorable cases divided by the total possible outcomes second is the frequency approach where we are doing that experiment uh, we are do conducting an experiment and we are looking up the number of uh, chances that is in favorable out of the uh, trials that i had done then we divide it and it is called relative and third case we do not have the chance to do an experiment we even do not know in advance but we were comes out with the judgment that remains the answer to me let's see to the examples of some priori classical approach that uh, how how we do it exactly suppose the first example comes out to be a uh, probability that my my question is the what is the probability that four comes of rolling a die now we have we are conducting an experiment on rolling a die rolling a die what can it produce so that what it can it produce that is a list of possible outcomes i must have to collect i must have to collect the list of possible outcomes and this is look at the first phase second two dots either three dot either four dot either five dot or either six dot so i have collected all the possible outcomes that can happen in conducting a rolling of die this is called a sample space now what is in favor of me my favor four is appearing one time and six is the total number of times that is the total possible outcome so my probability of this event of happening of four on rolling of die becomes one by six let's see another example tossing of a coin again the chance that head will appear i have a sample space head and tail so number of favors that is in me as one one by two becomes the probability of head appearance let's see to the example third that is uh, probability that exactly one head appears in tossing two coins suppose instead of one coin i am tossing two coins now what will happen the what what kind of different outcomes that will come in tossing of two coins will be either two coins when it touches to the floor e either they may have two heads one head another tail one tail another head and or both of can have two tails now i have collected all of them as hh hh t t h t t so what they are forming is they are forming as a sample space now i want the chance of one head exactly appears exactly one head appears means how many times it is happening it is happening at the second it is happening at the third so number of favors that is in my whatever the chance that i want to know so it becomes 2 2 divided by 4 4 is the number of total possible outcomes that is here so my probability of this event becomes 2 by 4 next is uh, can i do uh, can i calculate the probability of uh, two events together like if i want uh, uh, something like red card that i am picking from a shuffle pack of 52 cards and it is an ace that is you want a or b to happen together that is two events are occurring simultaneously so in this case there is a rule in probability concept this is called an addition rule let's see to the formula of this p if a is an event or b is an event so what are you doing either a is appearing or b is occurring either a is occurring or b is occurring the chance of a or b is determined by p 
पी ए प्लस पी बी माइनस पी ए एंड बी दैट इज कॉमन टू ए एंड बी मीन्स कॉमन ऑफ ए एंड बी दैट इज वेन ए एंड बी अकर साइमल्टेनियस देर इज अ डिफरेंस बिटवीन ए और बी एंड ए एंड बी ए और बी से दैट इधर ए अपियर्स और बी अपियर्स ए अकर्स और बी अकर्स बुक now when i am saying a and b means both are occurring at the same time this is intersection now what happens is this is p a or b is a fault now if suppose they do not have anything in common they do not have anything common that is mutually exclusive i defined earlier that mutually exclusive events if a and b are mutually exclusive events then it means that they cannot occur together so a and b will not have in common and in that case p a and b will be zero so that's what the formula becomes p a or b equals to p a plus p b p a and b because was zero it is a uh, it comes out like this a and b are mutually exclusive then p and b has to be zero let's see the uh, application of this addition rule into a problem i want to know the probability of drawing either an ace or a red card if you define a well shuffle of 52 cards how many red card we have 26 red cards we have 26 black cards there we have four ace we have four jacks we have four queens we have four tens we have four nines like this okay what do you want that the card you have picked what is the chance that it is either a ace or red now you have to count the number of favors that can happen with a red or ace and then you have to divide by the total possible outcomes and the total possible outcomes is nothing but the total is a 52 so you have to just count the number of in favor now let's see because of this contingency table i have formulated a contingency table here that how many red cards are there red are 26 black card 26 in red ace is 2 non ace is 24 black is 2 2 ace is black and 24 non ace are black so what i had is i have bifurcated into red and black and ace and non ace because i want to know apply the formula probability of red as an event or ace and as an event if you apply the addition rule p a plus p b minus p a intersection b that is p of probability of red appearance plus probability of ace appearance minus probability of red and ace appearance now what is the probability of red appearance how many red cards were there 26 total is 26 so 26 by 52 becomes the probability of red being a red card and ace how many ace card is there total 4 that is probability of ace becomes 4 by 52 next is it has to be subtracted by probability of red and ace that is do you have common card common playing card of red and ace yes you do have there are two cards which are having both the characteristics that is red also and ace so what you have to do is you have to subtract that is 2 divided by 52 now 26 by 52 plus 4 by 52 minus 2 by 52 becomes 28 by 52 so this is how you can uh, calculate the probability of being a red or ace or join or it is called an addition rule that either a red the card that you have drawn is either a red card or ace card so this is an application of addition rule let's see what other kind of probabilities we can calculate like i said p a and b if individually has to be calculated then it is called a joint probability joint probabilities p a and b p a and b is the number of favors when it happens a and b as common that is when a is an event b is an event which is occurring both at the same time how many times it occurs at that like divided by again total number of elementary outcomes so p a and b can be calculated it happened in the last example if i want to have p red and ace that is how many times it appeared how many cards in your 52 cards are red and ace both have the characteristics this is two cards out of 52 so this is another uh, kind of probability that we can calculate from the basic concept there is another is marginal probability suppose probability of a i want to calculate the formula is p a and b1 p a and b2 p a and b k that is if you want to have the marginal probability of an event a so you have to see it is it common with b1 is it common with b2 what is the probability of a and b1 how what is the probability of a and b2 this is what you have to do and you have to add let's see to uh, one of the example that will give me the joint probability on the same i'll continue the same example if i was supposed to calculate red or an ace card chance that a red or ace card will appear what i had done is because of or 
I applied the addition rule. But here I am calculating red and ace card. The same table, if you see at the bottom of this, uh, there is common how many card that is having both the characteristics, how many cards they have, they are red and ace. There are only two cards, so the answer becomes 2 by 52. Suppose in the same table, if I have a question, uh, what is the probability that uh, it is a black, that card that you have drawn is a black and non ace? That means how many cards are there that are black and non ace? There are 24 cards. So the answer would be 24 by total possible outcomes that is 52. So this is how we calculate joint probability. That is we look for a common. Let's see the application of marginal probability. I said in the first uh, marginal probability is that if it is common like probability of an ace, I want to find out the probability only of ace. This is an event that the card I have drawn from 52 cards, the card I have picked out it is an ace what is the chance and then i have to see ace can be a red card or ace can be a black card so what i have to do is 2 plus 2 by 52 that is 4 by 52 it has been shown here in the table that chance that ace card has appeared is 4 by 52 now this table this if we bifurcate whole of our experiment that we are going to conduct into this contingency table so many answers can come out we can answer to the additional rule we can answer to the joint we can answer to the marginal probabilities this is what we have now let's collectively to the definitions what they say contingency table this kind now if suppose event a1 a2 has been defined as a row event b1 b2 has been defined as a row then the first cell first cell tells us the joint probability of a1 and b1 second cell that is first row and second column probability of a1 and b2 tells you the joint probability of event a1 and b2 similarly the other row and at the last that is green colored that is pb1 pb1 will becomes the marginal probability that has been done probability of b1 is equals to probability of a1 and b1 plus probability of a2 and b1 so that means probability of b1 has is a marginal probability that has been added into that blue colored and then it is obtained and one thing to note the total of the probabilities in the last right hand bottom of the contingency table is one that is you cannot go beyond one every possible outcomes if added total possible outcomes if added cannot go beyond one so the chance of uh, totality is always one We'll solve a numerical example clearly. Just read to this numerical example. A sample of 500 respondents was selected in a large metropolitan area to determine various information concerning consumer behavior. So that was a survey on 500 respondents. Among the questions asked was, do you enjoy shopping for clothing? Of two 40 males, 136 said yes, that they enjoy shopping for clothing. Of 260 females, 224 answered yes okay that we enjoy shopping what is the probability now out of 500 respondents i am picking out one person and i want to know the chance that he is a male second question he enjoys shopping for clothing the person is a female and enjoys shopping for clothing like this so what we have to do is the first is we have to bifurcate our experiment the activity or the survey that we are doing on to a contingency table like 500 respondent is the total 240 are the males and 260 are females like this like see to this contingency table this is appearing do you enjoy shopping i have yes or no total males is 240 written females are 260 and then total is 500 next is how many said yes of enjoy shopping or clothing how many males who said yes for shopping for clothing there were 136 so i have made a common to it male plus yes 136 is written as a green color how many females out of 260 were who enjoy shopping they were 224 so if it is 224 and total is 260 so 36 will become the female that who does not uh, the females who does not enjoy shopping for clothing similarly if 240 is the total males and 136 says yes we enjoy so 104 is the final that males who does not enjoy shopping for clothing so this way we can prepare the contingency table now looking at this contingency table let's answer to this what is the chance that a person we have selected is a male now how would i answer the total males are 240 and we are surveying 500 so it is 240 by 500 that will be the first answer this will be the chance that he is a male second question is the chance that he enjoys shopping for clothing that is 
a person that we have selected is enjoys shopping for clothing that is yes how many are enjoying shopping for clothing there's 360 360 by 500 will be the answer to it now the third question what is the chance that the person is a female and enjoys shopping for clothing now is a female and enjoys shopping for clothing that is the person we have selected should have both the character he, the person should be a female and should enjoy shopping for how many are there there are 224 just see the contingency table there are 224 those are female and enjoy shopping for clothing next is what is the chance that the person is a male and does not enjoy shopping for clothing that is male and does not enjoy both the so that the person should not enjoy shopping for clothing and meat how many are there 104 104 by 500 next is next is a different question chance that is a female or that means either a female or enjoy shopping for clothing now we have to apply an addition rule addition rule says that probability of female that is 260 by how many females 260 by 500 plus 360 by 500 minus the common that is 224 by 500 and the final answer will come out to be 396 by 500 now these all fractions can be further simplified into fractions 245 uh, 240 by 500 can be simplified and 360 by 500 but remember the probability should never never be less than zero and above one so what is happening is either we can represent them as a fractions or we represent as a decimals no issue or if you want to represent them as a percentage you can multiply by 100 and the answer is there next is uh, computing conditional probabilities conditional probabilities is means if we are uh, working with two events that is one event has already happened and we are trying to find out the probability of another like suppose if i say that you picked up a king you are drawing a card that is king now king has been withdrawn and it is in your pocket now now pick another card so pick another card means that what is the chance that the another card is also a king now what happens is once you have picked up a card out of it the card now remains not 52 it is 51 so the second event will occur with a different probability it cannot be the same it cannot be the same so it is a conditional probability when the second event may depend on the first what has happened into that activity so this is p a it is defined as p a oblique b now a oblique b means that is you want to find out the chance of a to happen when b has already happened so the formula for this will be equal to p a and b a and b a and b is joint probability divided by p b the conditional probability of a given that b has occurred this is the form now b b oblique a that is you want to find out the chance of b when a has already happened p a and b divided by p a it is easy to remember when b is on the second side b has already happened so denominator will have pb when a is on the given side that is a has already occurred so in denominator on the right hand side is pa and numerator is same for so you can easily remember to it another part is the question is that whether a depends on b or not these formula of conditional probabilities applied when a depends on b in case if a does not depends on b that is a is independent of b and b is, is not dependent on a when this case happens then see to the last of this slide if a and b are independent events then p a oblique b is nothing but a because a does not depends on b and you are looking for the chance to find out a when b has already happened when a does not depends on b so it will be p a similarly into the second question into the second if you want to find p b oblique a then b does not depends on a in situation if b does not depends on a the above formula is applied only if a and b are dependent if a and b are independent then the lower side of the formulas will be applied let's see to the same i'm continuing with the same that is 500 uh, were the total surveyed and then i bifurcated 220 uh, 240 were the female uh, males and 260 were the females and i asked certain questions whether you enjoy shopping for clothing or not like this now i raise another question what is the chance that a male respondent has been chosen that suppose now out of 500 what we have done is we have chosen a male we have chosen a male we have already know that the person is a male now what is the chance that he enjoys shopping for clothing in case 
the male has been chosen so you know already that the person is a male so the same contingency table is applied to the question but to see the answer the male has been already selected you want the chance that e that is enjoy shopping for clothing so the formula is applied e and male divided by p male that is first the joint probability of e and male is 136 by 5, 500 and probability of happening male that the person is a male 240 by 500 let's see the back to this question again already i have selected the person as a male what is the chance that the person does not enjoy shopping for clothing so what you will have is e dash oblique male e dash denotes that he does not uh, the person does not enjoy shopping for clothing now e dash oblique male is probability of joint probability of e dash and male divided by probability of male now in this case this is 104 by 500 already we have calculated this divided by 240 by 500 the answer is in decimals now 0 0.43 so this is how we say about uh, conditional probabilities next uh, this is multiplication rule this is the same if we cross multiply if we want to find out joint probability using this conditional probability formulas p and b also can be defined as p a oblique b that is a depends on b into p b but the question is if a and b are independent then p a oblique b will be p a and p a oblique b will be p a that means p a and b is equals to p a into pb we can read to this question where we have uh, two inspectors but they are independent the health department routinely conducts two independent inspections of each restaurant with the restaurant passing only if both inspectors pass it but both inspectors are independent now inspector a is very experienced and hence pass only two percent of restaurants that actually do have health code violations inspector b is less experienced and he passes only seven percent that that is the chance that inspector b passes the restaurant with violations is seven percent and inspector a passes the restaurant with violations the two percent chance what is the probability that inspector a passes a restaurant given that inspector b has found a violation that is in a particular restaurant inspector b has found a violation and inspector a is a still passes but the question says that inspector a and inspector b both are independent in their verifying this restaurant so the answer is that even if it is given that inspector b has found a violation the inspector a is independently working this answer is 0 0.02 and similarly if inspector a has passes it and inspector b what is the chance inspector b will pass so 0 0.07 so they are independent uh, since they are independently working on it next is the last that is uh, conditional probability the application of bayes theorem uh, it's a long formula pbi uh, B I oblique A it's a long let's see to the direct and application of Bayes theorem then we will come back to this formula read to this a manufacturing firm produces pipes in two plants one and two with daily productions 1500 and 2000 pipes respectively the fraction of defective pipes produced by two plants one and two are 0 0.006 and 0 0.008 respectively if a pipe selected at random from the day's production is found to be defective what is the chance that it has come from plant one and plant two? It's a, why we are applying Bayes theorem to it. Just go into the concept. What they say is that you know that a defective has come out of a plant. That is one thing. That you know that this plant was working and it is producing the defective. One side is that is D oblique E1 is provided to you. Condition that defective come out from plant one is given to you. But in case if you have defective stored in a store defectives are collected and if i ask you to pick a defective out of it if you are picking out a defective out of it and if i say what is the chance that this defective has come out from plant one now it becomes a reverse it was given to you that a defective has come out from a plant one defective from plant two has come out but in case if defective is there that means now the defective has been given to you and you have to obtain that it has come out from plant one so it's a it's a called reverse probability the application of base theorems comes out here when something as a condition is given and you are doing the reverse of this look at this just collect it all that in a manufacturing company what we have is e1 is the production from the plant one e2 has the production from the plant two 
probability of evil that you know it's a prior probabilities that you know that 1500 was coming out from plant 1 so 1500 by total 3500 and pe2 that is this is the chance that a item will come out from even no defectives if i denote by d what is given to you it is given that p d oblique e1 because you know that this was plant 1 and defective come out from here that the chance is 0.006 d oblique e2 it is given as 0.008 now goal is to find e1 oblique d and e2 oblique d look at this this is a complete table if you see it it will calculate you the reverse first row e1 p e1 is given to you d oblique e1 is to given to you and what you have to obtain finally is e1 oblique d look at the calculation first two columns of this table always provided to you third column you have to calculate that is the joint probability joint probability is calculated by 3 by 7 into 0.006 that becomes 0.00257 similarly for plant e2 4 by 7 into 0.008 will be the joint probability in this so the third column is prepared joint probabilities has been prepared just add this column 0.00257 plus 0.00457 add it to 0.0071 revised probability that is the answer that you need is 0.00257 so you want the answer of p e1 oblique d that is 0.00257 divided by 0.0071 that was the total so this becomes the answer that if you pick a defective what is the chance that it has come out from plant e1 was 0.36 and if you pick a defective and the chance that it will come out from the second plant is 0.64 so this is another example that can be answered by reading into it that is was called it is also a bayes theorem application that the table i have comprised is the same answering to this formula that is p a oblique b but it looks difficult but the same thing has been done into it and if the plants 1 2 is extended to 3 what i'll do is i'll have three rows that is e1 e2 e3 and the same sum will be added to the three rows so what we have learned here is we have learned the basic probability concepts definitions the events the requirement of equally likely events that is the events that is coming out of the experiment should be equally likely otherwise you cannot calculate the probabilities basic probability rules also has been discussed that is addition rule joint probability marginal probabilities and what happens if the events are mutually exclusive then p a and b is zero the third that was discussed was the conditional probability conditional probability how we do it and if the events are independent how the conditional probabilities are affected and fourth we have seen to the bayes theorem application application of bayes theorem that is the reverse probability and bayes theorem was applied see the significance of bayes theorem once a conditional probability is given to you one side and you are reverse the defective come out from plant 1 if the accident is already there now it has been done from the scooter it has been done from the car so this this bayes theorem has a very good application to it so what we have is the chance that we look for the chance the chance that we pass to the cat examination it is all we do but remember again that ki the chance can never go beyond 1 it can never be less than 0 it can be represented as fractions and all this so we i summarize here with this that you will be able to calculate your probabilities your daily routine exercises with this i thank you for this all viewers to my session on this theory of probability thank you so much Thank you.